guys, Sick Crazy here. Today I'm going to be telling you guys my life story. Um, and I'm not looking for sympathy here. I just really think you guys don't really know much about me, so you guys should uh, learn about me. Um, anyway, about the gameplay real quick. It's a solar uplink gameplay. I go 51 and 15. I don't think I have any uplinks, but... Um, and I might end up putting another gameplay because I'm just making this commentary, just speaking my mind, speaking about my life. Um, and if I go out of order, I'm sorry. I'm trying to do the best I can to stay in order. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so, yeah, let's get started. So, um, I'm going to start with where my parents met. Uh, they met at a New Year's Eve party in 1990. Um, yeah, my parents are old. They started dating and... Um, Got married in 1993, October. I actually got married on Mischief Nights, so October 30th, 1993. Um, in 1996, April 23rd to be exact, my sister was born. Uh, three years later, I was born um, in 1999. On April 23rd, so we're, uh, we're, we're both born on the same day, but three years apart. The chances of that are like 1 in 100,000. So from the day I was born, there I knew... Everybody knew there was something special about me. I'm not trying to be cocky. Um, and it might not have been the best thing. Um, so, back in a little bit. Uh, April 15th, 1999, eight days before I was born, my grandpa died after suffering from long-term effects of things. I'm not really sure. I'm not going to go into that. Um, so that's where I got my name from because his name was Michael. And I'm named Michael, so... Um, anyway, um, first three years of my life, I don't really remember much. Um, my earliest memory is when I was, on my third birthday, I was sitting in my dining room arguing with my mom, um, saying, I'm not three, I'm two. And she's saying, Michael, you're three now. I'm like, I'm not three, I'm two. And she's, she, we're going back and forth. She's saying, I'm three, I'm saying, I, I'm two. Um, and... It's just a funny story that I'll tell, I'll go into more detail about in one of my Squeaker Stories episodes. So, anyway, um, that's my earliest memory. But another thing I remember from my, uh, when I was three is my sister and I used to fight all the time. Um, but I don't really remember what over. And another thing, we went down to Florida for a week, uh, in August. I forget what, what dates it was, but... Uh, I remember going down to Florida and going to Disney World. I don't remember much of Disney World, but I have one of my best memories down there, and that's riding a um, a ride with my dad, which I'm not able to do anymore. Uh, and anyway, um, so we went to see my Uncle Kenny. We went to Disney World. We went to see my Uncle Aunt, my Aunt Debbie. Um, and yeah, um, so... Uh, that's it for my three-year-old year, and then in 2002, 2003, maybe 2004 at the latest, um, my dad started having a little bit of chest pain and not thinking anything of it, he went to a doctor, um, just to see what it was. Uh, my dad was a runner and a fire, a volunteer firefighter and a volunteer EMT, um, and he was basically told he should be dead. Um, he was diagnosed with a cardiomy with cardiomyopathy, which means an enlarged heart. His heart was actually two times the size of a normal human heart. Um, and he was uh, also diagnosed with a myocardial bridge. I don't really know what that is, but I'm pretty sure it's like a vein that goes through where it's not supposed to. Um, and yeah, so he's also diagnosed with congestive heart failure. So he was basically told. Yeah, you gotta stop running. Uh, you gotta stop fighting fires, and you can't be an EMT anymore. And um, I know that was something that really hurt for him. Um, and he struggled day in and day out. Did his best to work. Um, I remember shortly after he he was work, he would come home from work every day at five fifteen. We'd sit down at the table, and I'd always say, "You're late." Uh, if he wasn't there if at 5.15 on the dot, or you're early, if he was there earlier than that. Um, and I, on Fridays, he would get out at 12, and since I was still in preschool, and uh, I would always go out to lunch with them, with my parents. Um, that's a great memory I have. And um, anyway, um, 
after he was diagnosed, he started to struggle with kind of not doing the things he loved, and that was hard on him, I know, and uh, I don't really know much about that since I was so young, I don't remember much of it, but um, yeah, and then July 27th, 2007, I believe it was, uh, my dad was diagnosed with uh, multiple sclerosis, which I don't really know much about either. Uh, I just know it's a brain disease, and yeah, it really uh, affected him. And that's when I kind of started caring. Uh, the the, uh, the reason I remember that date so much, though, is my that's my aunt's birthday. So we found out on my aunt's birthday, a day that should be happy that my dad's got multiple sclerosis, or MS for short. Um, so anyway, I really started to care then. Um, I remember finding out two years later because I didn't, they didn't want to scare me or anything. So they didn't really tell me much. Um, and then finally I told them I wanted to be in on the loop. Um, and my parents, this, this is when I'm about 11 years old, so 2010. Um, my parents were kind of hesitant at first because, like I said, they didn't want to scare me. Um, but they eventually uh, opened up to it. Um, when I found out how sick my dad actually was, I wanted to start making a difference. And... Um, I did my best, and um, so in seventh grade, after transferring out of my school from bull uh, because of bullying, um, I really started to care. And like I said, and I sent a letter to my principal, and I said, "Can we have a dress down day, basically?" Uh, and all the money goes to the MS Society, so they decided to do a. Uh, it's a crazy shock day because they couldn't do a dress down day. I don't know why the president of the school didn't want it or whatever. Um, but anyway, so they said a crazy sock day would be okay. A minimum donation of a dollar, and they had a competition. And uh, the school of 500 kids raised over $300, which I was so proud of. Uh, my first time trying to raise money for something, I, I raised $300. Um, and I did. That year, I participated in the MS Walk. Uh, or sorry, in 2012, I participated in the MS Walk. Um, shortly after that, I started to go into a downward spi spi spiral. Sorry, of depression, and um, I was pretty bad. Uh, there were times like I would get really upset for no reason, um, and I, you'd barely see me with a smile on my face. Uh, my way to cope with that was play video games and hang out with my friends and play sports. Um, I would play video games when I wasn't playing sports, and I'd play uh, like Call of Duty and stuff like that. So I, I uh, that started because I got MW3 for Christmas, and that kind of just kept me, put me in a, my own little world so I could uh, do something fun and relax. Um, so anyway. Uh, Eventually, I got my Xbox and I played video games more. Um, but for like, I, my favorite sport was soccer um, because I, I did focus on soccer a lot more. Uh, and I played baseball and basketball, but um, soccer was where I had my most success. I was a goalie. Uh, I won eight championships with my original team, and then I played for my school for one year before I called it quits with that. Um, I had a really good career with my with my uh, team and I still miss it to this day but um anyway so I started to go into a downward spiral of depression and I kind of coped with it with video games and sports like I said and um uh winning was something that I enjoyed so yeah I know I'm kind of like going randomly but I'm just saying what I'm thinking so um anyway uh, my mom took, started taking me to uh, a psychologist, and I'm still actually seeing that psychologist to the, to this day, um, almost four years later. And it's uh, it was always something hard for me with my dad being sick. I always um, it, I'm not trying to bring faith into religion into it, but I always wondered why God made my dad sick, and I I always got mad and at him, and I felt like. Um, they, 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 it wasn't fair, uh, and then I realized that he was made sick because he, that he, God knew he was strong enough to deal with it. Um, that, and that's my way of coping with my dad being sick. So um, I started to get a little bit better once I realized that, and then in February and March and a little bit of April of 
2014, my depression got worse once I started high school. I kind of missed my old friends, and my and my dad was getting more and more sick. Um, and in March, we found out my dad was going to need a heart transplant. Um, so that really upset me and scared me to death. Um, you guys don't really understand that, but... Uh, anyway, he had testing done, and in April he was added to the heart transplant list. When, um, so then every time my I, a call slip from my school would come in, I would I think it was uh, my dad's having a heart transplant, and uh, yeah. So anyway, uh, I started to gradually get better and better, and then my uh, in January of 2015, my dad had the heart transplant, um, and that was something like I said was hard for me to. Uh, deal with uh, it's it's not very hard when you don't like don't know the person but it was hard to cope with because my dad was it's my dad so so anyway after I got uh, through the transplant um, so we got the call about 115 on a Thursday um, I get out 150 on Thursdays and a call slip came in for me in eighth period um, at about 130 that and they basically, or no, at about 120, and they basically said uh, on the slip that says, it said, uh, your dad's having a heart transplant. Um, so they told me to go down, sign out, and my sister was coming to pick me up. Um, my sister and I went home, we called my dad's friends and relatives, then we went down to the hospital. Um, we got to see my dad, we sat with him for about five hours before he was taken back to the OR. He was taken back about 10 o'clock. Um, and they didn't start the operation until 4, so we were kind of nervous. 4 a.m., um, so we were kind of nervous that something was wrong. And um, so anyway, my sister and I went home from the hospital about 1.30 a.m., and we slept, and by the time we woke up, we were going down. We set an alarm for 8 o'clock and went down to the hospital um, because we just needed sleep and we needed to relax a little bit. Uh, we were at, we were really stressed out, and it was the probably the one of the hardest days of my life, if not the hardest. Um, so anyway, uh, we got up at eight o'clock, and my mom uh, was with us, and we all got showers, and then went down to the hospital. And um, so my dad had the surgery uh, and came out of surgery about 10:30 a.m. Uh, and this is the hard part for me to talk about. Um, so we couldn't see my dad for the first hour or so he was out of the OR, about two hours. Um, and my Uncle Joe was with us, my dad's twin brother, and, uh, he'd seen all this stuff before. So, uh, he bought us lunch and tried to keep us calm. And then we got told we could go back to my dad's room and, um, two people at a time and my mom and my sister went back first and one second guys anyway sorry about that um my sister like was in the room for about 15 seconds and then she walked out bawling and uh told me i could go in um and the reason she was bawling i didn't understand it at the time was uh she she saw he had he had a ventilator in um, and a tube in his ab uh, chest and that was probably the scariest thing I've ever seen. Um, I literally lost it and, and I still can't talk about it. It's hard to talk about. So anyway, I couldn't gain composure from it uh, in front of him all day. Um, and I'm at his bedside and he opens his eyes and. <laughs> I was like, do you want Kim? He said no. And he shook his head no. And then um, he reached his hand out and told me, and like, wanted me to hold his hand. Sorry about that, guys. I uh, had to read my composure because it's something hard to talk about. But uh, anyway, that was just when I realized how strong my dad actually was. Um, and he, I knew he really didn't want to be in this situation. And, so I, I really, um, I tried to, like, hold back, but I couldn't, and, um, 
and uh, anyway, he, uh, he was taken off the ventilator on Sunday, uh, and I mean he like taken off because he didn't need it, um, and he was in the hospital for about three weeks, and and then got discharged. Um, but those three weeks were rough. Um, going down to the hospital and focusing on school, um, not being able to see my dad during the week. Um, and it was just really rough. Um, and uh, it, while we're all sitting there happy that my dad got the transplant, you have to imagine um, how the donor's family felt. And uh, that's uh, my grandma actually on the phone. She said uh, two day, the day after the transplant, she said, uh, that she was praying for the donor's family, and I said, oh my god, I didn't even think about that, and I lost it, um, because I'm, th um, I've, I felt selfish, um, I felt like the only thing I cared about was my dad getting it, and I didn't even think about the donor's family, but, uh, I finally realized that it wasn't, uh, my fault, really, that the donor, it, the donor's family was in that situation, and, just to, like, uh, be thankful for it. Um, so anyway, that Sunday we went to the, the yearly fire banquet, quote-unquote. It wasn't really much of a banquet. Um, and we kind of just relaxed. My uncle took us. Um, and my dad actually received the, the award, uh, the president's award. Um, and he had known he was going to get it for a while. But, um, like, he had a feeling he was going to get it, I mean. But, um... And then he wasn't there to get it, so my sister and I received it for him. Um, so, anyway, uh, my uncle was really there for us the whole time. Um, and like I said, it was like the, the hardest three weeks uh, ever. And uh, it's just good to be over for now. Um, well, part of it is over. Uh, I'll explain that in another video when I'm ready to talk about that. Um... But, really, uh, after watching this, I hope you guys learn to hold your loved ones close. Uh, and really appreciate what they do for you, because I really appreciate what my parents did for me. Um, and, th like, uh, what they've put me through isn't their fault, really. So, like, the, all the health stuff. So, uh, and I hope they know that. But, uh, that's going to do it for this video, guys. Comment, like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, be down in the description below. As always, guys, it's been sick crazy. Hopefully you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.